So I think that women really have great intuition, and that's like a really great advantage. Not that men don't have it. There's a lot of guys like, you know, I, I, my cousins who are very successful and stuff, they're like, you know, I had this intuition about this guy at work. And, and, and guys don't realize that you do things every day that's common, right? There's one little thing like the way you are reacted when you're talking about something or the way you looked down or the way you looked up or something that is like, huh. <laughs> it's like a dog, you know, yeah. and they're like, hey. Yeah. And it's like right there, your gut. And it's like, women have that. It's like, we're kind of psychic. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, G, and this is a new episode of Leaders Create Leaders Season 2. Now, check it out. We're about to get into a special episode because it's International Women's Month, and uh, in my opinion, it's Woman Empowerment Day every day, but I have a really special female entrepreneur that I'm going to introduce you to. Her name is Vanessa DeLeon, and she's one of the most inspiring Latinas and young hard-working female entrepreneurs in the game right now. You're one of the best designers in the world. I know. Vanessa DeLeon. Make some noise for yeah. Vanessa DeLeon. Thank you. I am not afraid to get my hands dirty. I was not born with that silver spoon in my mouth. Designer extraordinaire, Vanessa DeLeon. People may underestimate me because I'm 100 pounds and 5'2". Hi, thanks you. for having me. So it's back again? Is that First what happened? Time. Back and better than ever. Uh, Vanessa DeLeon, welcome yeah. to I've been very lucky in my career. And I want to give back. She's just terrific. You made me think a lot about why I was living like that. You did it! So we're going to go into Vanessa's story. And, you know, it's really, really inspiring because if you think about it, we all kind of started from somewhere and it really starts from our ancestry and for Vanessa that was in Cuba her grandfather grew up in that in a communist country and you know it was a miracle that he was able to make it to America to provide opportunity for his family and because of that now Vanessa was able to live the American dream for me my grandparents came from Colombia and Italy and again if it wasn't for our great grandparents and the fact that they took risk to come to this country we wouldn't be in the positions we are in today my grandfather, ironically, was a designer in Cuba. He actually designed kitchens and bathrooms. And when the revolution happened, they were forced to leave. And then from there, my grandfather went to Spain with his family with, I think, $100 in his pocket and barely nothing. Um, and then at that point, he came to the United States, to, uh, to the United States and then he uh, migrated in Union City, Newark, and then from Newark to Union City, New Jersey. And that's where he... Um, he hustled and opened his first furniture store. So that's how it happened. Growing up, working in that furniture store, you know, for so many years, helping her family really get through that recession and keep that business going. Once she, you know, was working there in that furniture for so many years, and then her passion for fashion grew, eventually it just collided. And, and she just decided, you know what, I really, really love interior design. I'm gonna go all in on interior design. And you know what, she had a lot of the odds stacked against her. And one thing that we're gonna learn from Vanessa is how to be prepared for a recession, how to be prepared for the downturns in your business. Now, Vanessa's had to deal with that more than once with her family and with her business, and she really learned um, how to overcome that kind of obstacle, which is one of the most you know devastating things for most entrepreneurs, and a lot of times, when something goes wrong, a recession hits, your the, your marketplace goes through, you know, goes through a downturn. Can you overcome that obstacle, you know, and, and really stick with the business and get creative on how to be able to find different ways to monetize to keep the business going, so that when that recession ends and, and, the, and the marketplace starts to turn, you're there and you build a long-standing brand, and that's exactly what Vanessa has done. I think you need to position yourself in many different things in order for something to spark. Because yeah. it sparked when, I mean, even I was working in a furniture store that I would decorate because I had to decorate the vignettes. I never thought about des designing and decorating. And it's like so apparent, it's right in front of you. You're doing it every day. Yeah. But I think it sparked when I, I would constantly go to these houses and it was like, 
I need your opinion. And it's like, oh my God, my opinion really matters. Mm -hmm. And right there is when I'm like, all right, that's it. I got to go back to school. Yeah. And that's how it happened. Mm -hmm. I knew that fashion was my thing. I knew that's what I wanted. But this is kind of, it all relates, yeah. you know, color stories for the seasons, patterns, it all, it all relates. Fashion and design really are one unit. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go back to school and I, um, when I went back, I wanted it so bad that I couldn't <laughs> wait to graduate. Yeah. Cause then I'm like, oh my gosh, this is always what I wanted to do. Yeah. I got to do it right now. Yeah. Like a year from now wasn't good enough. Two years, four years, forget it. It was like, I, four years felt like, like. 30, a decade, yeah, yeah. whatever. Like, I couldn't wait. And I said right there, I'm like, I'm opening up my LLC. I think it was my, it was my sophomore year or like not even. And I decided to, to open up. My, I went to like legal Zoom or something. Yeah. I didn't even know how I did it. It was like, <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't really afford to like hire a lawyer. And I didn't even know what I was doing. Am I, am I an LLC? Am I an S Corp? Or like, what am I? And then you're like reading what LLC means and how you're going to fire your taxes. And right. so you're doing all this stuff because I couldn't afford a lawyer. So at the time, I'm like, that's it. I'm opening up my own, my own business while I was in school. Yeah. And I did. So what, what ha and how this all came to be was my father's furniture store, we en I ended up buying it over for my dad. Yeah. Because uh, he wanted to retire. So remember, I hated selling furniture. Yeah. So I sort of split the business yeah. and created an entity within the space, sort of upstairs. We built out the upstairs. And I remember applying for a small loan yeah. at a bank. It was like so small. It's like the only thing I could get. Yeah. And back then I felt like they were giving loans away, but it was the only thing I could get. And I remember taking that, built the upstairs, and then I started going to trade shows and started really understanding the industry. And then from there, I was like, okay, I got to be bigger. I got to branch out. I got to leave this because I felt like I was still in the nest of what, 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 was, what once was my family's furniture business, right. but I did this on my own. So I felt like I really needed to pave my own way yeah. because it really didn't come from that. So I was even more eager to like branch out and get my own office and like take it to the next level. And I did, and I was so scared. I remember like seeing my first space. It was like in Ridgewood, New Jersey, like on Main Avenue because it was really cool down there. Mm -hmm. I remember walking into the space, it was brand new, and I'm like, oh my God, am I biting more than I can chew? Yeah. And I was so scared, I was 20. Yeah. 20 years old yeah. and I walked into this space and I'm like, um, I like to sign a lease. They're like, oh, five year terms. This is too, oh. I'm like, wait, what does all this mean? Like I didn't get any of that stuff, but I did my research and I spoke to a few people and then I signed my first real big girl lease. And that's when I started, uh, I hired an assistant at the time. I was already working with a few clients. Um, what helped me was somebody wrote about me. I was published really young in Latina magazine and another like local magazine and someone saw it and then I had a big wig client that was like, I love your work. I have hundreds of thousands of dollars. You're going to build my short house. I'm like, oh my gosh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what? what do you do with the money? How do I, do I deposit that? How does that even go? Like it was big. So another thing that Vanessa talks about, which I love, is the triple D. And you gotta have that drive, that determination, and that discipline. And the last one for me is so important because I feel a lot of entrepreneurs do not understand what it means to be disciplined. That kind of kicks in and you're like, I gotta do it all. I gotta be a jewel of all trades, master of many. Right. And that's why I sort of grew up and, and trying to just always hustle. And with that comes like, all right, you gotta think on your feet. Okay, so if this happens, what are you gonna do next? And people don't have like worst case scenario. All right, so, so like my designers, like if something like catastrophic happens, okay, I don't wanna hear about it. Give me the three options that we can do to rectify the situation and how we're gonna move from it. Yeah. Like what are we gonna do to move forward? Yeah. So if you don't have that sort of sense of like self-motivation or like, um, like just like, you know, the worst case scenario, just jumping in and like just being resourceful Resourceful is the perfect word. It's just being resourceful. And I, I feel like that's part of the business sense, right? Being resourceful, um, being street smart, and school smart is so important. Because I can't tell you how many times vendors or subcontractors try to hustle me. I'm like, ah, you play with the wrong chick, okay? <laughs> because I was raised in Union City, New yeah. Jersey. I was raised in the hood. 
I saw everything and anything you can possibly think of with my grandfather in his furniture store when they would try to haggle him and they, you know, whatever it was, I, yeah. I was there. Like, I yeah, get all push. that. Yeah, you got to learn that. I get yeah. it. So yeah. I was raised in that environment. Like, yeah. you know, always watch your back, but like always have a second option. It's so easy to fail. It's so hard to succeed. And I always say that. So, so why not challenge yourself, right? So why is it so hard? And just like write the list of why is it so hard and see what you lack in that list. Do a pros and, a pros and cons. If I, if I spend too much, well, you know what? Maybe somebody else should, should take care of my money, like a parent mm-hmm. or, you know, like parents, help me out with this because I'm obviously going to spend it. Should we put it in a, in a fund? Should we do this? Should we do that? Money markets. Like where should I put my money once I'm getting this money? Because the first thing that I've, I've noticed in young entrepreneurs that have been successful, they spend it like this. Okay. And you have to, you have to you have to stack your chips, man, because you never know when those chips are gonna fall. Yes. And the economy, and I'll tell you when the economy tanked, what I did to sort of shift my business, because it happened right in the middle of my growth. So I knew that that being a name, just a name, was enough. And what you do with that name, you know, like I, I could eventually make, you know, lines of furniture. I can, you know come up with, you know, bedding line, I can do fabrics, I can come up with a pillow and rug line, I can create lighting and then take it from an, another level and then be in the big box stores and then all, you know, there's so much more that can come from it. So I knew that building the brand was important. So so I thought, okay, if I if I leverage both, right? If I if I figure that out, I'll I'll do that on the side and then focus on my business. Right. So I did and it worked out and and then I started uh, hiring more people because I needed more work. But then, at the same time, the economy just went, Oof. Wow. and it was like the growth of the business at that time. It was like, it was like, oh my gosh, I'm doing so well, and everything's happening for me, and then, and then, everybody who was in finance, all my clients that were in finance, everyone who you know worked for a big corporation were laid off, and then my clients like, I can't finish my job. Um, I had ten proposals out, didn't get any of them. Like. I was like, what am I going to do? Wow. I had staff that I didn't want to fire. Yeah. You know, I'm all about like, keep it small, keep it tight and, you know, grow the business and, and, and let's, you know, let's work as, as tight as we can mm-hmm. so our margins could be higher. But how am I going to like lay people off? We were tight. We were small already. Like, yeah. what am I going to do? And I was, I, I remember I was like, oh my gosh, like I need to reinvent and now. So what I did, I started creating packages for editors, for uh, media companies, for the production companies, and I would literally make like boxes. At the time, they weren't fancy like this, <laughs> uh, but you know, it was like a box that I got from like I don't know, Staple, like, whatever, from Michaels or whatever, and from a craft store. And I made labels, stickers on the computer, and I, I brought candles, and then I put a media kit together. And it was really cool because I had all this time on my hands. Like I didn't get any, you know, like clients were like leaving me left and right. Yeah. So I was putting all these like packages together and created like amazing press kits all by hand. Wow. All by hand. And I, I could, I don't even have the wherewithal to even think of, even, I, I just placed an order online and I got these boxes made and yeah. that's it. You know, like I can't even imagine doing this by hands. But I did something very similar to this and sent it out to like all production companies in Manhattan. I sent it out to like, um, I sent it out to all media channels, all that stuff. And then I started getting all these production companies trying to reinvent their wheels and starting to do things and whatever. So when all that happened, I got the opportunity of getting um, on more shows that were actually paying. So I was like, okay, so I can. I oh, can, so you got paid to go on the shows yeah. too? Oh, wow. Yeah, so then. I started working on these shows, getting paid for them, like the ones that were more of a uh, more lucrative position. Yeah. So I would get paid for those, and like you know the Fox and and the Good Days, I didn't get paid for those because you kind of go kind of for PR. But I would do that in between, so people could start getting the buzz on my name. So from those press kits, other magazines started writing about me, and the newspapers started writing about me, and then people that did have a little extra or whatever, they would hire me because they like read about me. Because they're, they're just not Googling yeah. or going on the yellow pages or whatever. Do you know what yellow pages are? Yeah. <laughs> it's a box book about this big that you put it underneath your chair so it makes you a little taller. <laughs> um, so, 
So at that time, I was like, okay, this is, I'm going to reinvent the wheel. And then I started really digging into who Vanessa is as a brand. And I fine-tuned all of it. And then that's when, little by little, the economy started getting better. So I was stronger because I had everything, you know, all my logos looked the same. All, everything was flawless. Yeah. You know, my Pantone color for the green was every specific green for everything around me. You know, it's all those little things that you don't really realize because you're so busy trying to like become an artist or be a designer or being, you know, a, you know, the attorney, whatever it is that you don't focus on the little things that really matter. Yeah. So that downtime made me focus. And then the shift in my business became bigger and better. And then I was able, when the economy started turning again, I already had notoriety. I felt like I was grown. Then I got the opportunity to be on a Food Network's Restaurant Impossible with Robert Irvine. Then that was a really great position because then that put open other doors for me. And then from there, I was like, you know, one day, I'm going to be a big time New York designer. And I always used to tell my dad this. And anytime he and I would get into a fight regarding business, I'm like, you're going to see, Dad. I'm going to be a big interior designer in New York City. And he's like, what does that mean? He would always tell me, that. what does that mean? And I go, you know what that means? It means I'm going to be an interior designer in New York City. Watch, you'll see. And then we'll get into a fight. Yeah, and yeah. I would always throw that in his face. He's like, so what do you do as an interior Tell me, tell me, tell me. What do you do as an interior designer? You know, he would you know, do one of those. And I'm like, I come up with ideas and I sell them. Oh, so you're going to come up with something that's not tangible. Oh, good luck with that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to sell my idea. And I, to this day, I'm in New York City and I sell my ideas. Vanessa De Leon has gone on to firmly establish herself as a leading designer in home decor with her unique mix of glamour and minimalism, or as she calls her style, glamalistic. My goal for this home feels glamalistic. We're building, we're working with architects. Vanessa reminds me of a Latina version of Martha Stewart, and I cannot wait to see the amount of impact that she makes. And she's already crushing it. I mean, she's all over television. She's been on HDTV, many reality TV shows. She's winning awards left and right. And uh, she's just a great, great person. But you know what I love about her? She wants to empower other women. And you know what? She believes that they have a little bit more of an edge over guys. So let's get into that. I'm, I'm all about like empowering women. like kind of like Beyonce, you know, like, you know, Sasha Fierce, and she's like all yeah. about like women empowerment. Yeah. Like, I love it. And, and I think there should be more women who are entrepreneurs and make as much as men and, you know, in corporate situations. For and sure. I think that's super important. I mean, why not? We might have the next female president. You never know, yeah. likely. And as a matter of fact, I think um, women always feel like maybe they have something to prove, so that gives them a little bit of an edge. Yeah. Kind of men are yeah. like the breadwinners, and then, right. you know, but the, the women are also the breadwinners, and guess what? They're the breadwinners, and they bring home the bacon, they fry the bacon too. <laughs> yeah. And like I always say, women are great with multitasking. No offense to men, but like, a, like I could be on the phone, okay? Write up a proposal, take a conference call. It's not the best thing to multitask because you always slip on something. That's why you always have to like triple check. You got to make sure you yeah, definitely review. Check. You have to review. But I know that I do a little bit of everything yeah. and I get it done. Men are more like, no, no, I got to finish this in order to get to that, in order to get to that. And I'm like, no, no, you could get to three things at one time and just do it because I do it. You know what I mean? Vanessa told her father, one day I'm going to be one of the best interior designers in the world and someone's going to pay me for my ideas. And that's exactly what she's doing. You know, so congrats Vanessa. Continue to keep being a boss lady and inspiring because we need more boss ladies out there. And you know what? If she was able to turn her passion and purpose into a paycheck, you can too. So just go out there and make it happen. It's your boy GA. Peace. Switch lanes in the drop. One red, one blue, like we came with the cops. Yeah, it's going down, but.